welcome to the Mint Condition episode number five. I am Joe, aka Bunch of Bets, alongside my esteemed colleague, co host, Chamber. Chamber, how you doing, buddy? Doing pretty good, man. You know, having some fun collecting digital assets and, uh, you know, being a degenerate. It's great times. <laughs> and our other uh, our other up and coming rising star of a co host, Des. Des, how you doing, man? <laughs> I don't know about all that, but I'm doing good. Yeah, uh, it's great when you can be a degenerate, collect, and you know, do all this fun stuff like racing all in one platform. So I'm all in I'm one platform, on all yeah. in one podcast, even. And we have a very special guest with us today. We've got Ben Jammin. Uh, ben, how you doing, buddy? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me, Joe. Appreciate it. You know, pleasure watching you guys over the past you know couple of episodes and. It's- Good to be here meeting you and in this whole community. It's been fantastic and I'm really looking forward to it. It's funny. I uh I feel like we're we're buddies already because you know, in in Top Shot and Twitter and you guys are doing um, you know, the Top Shot Cave with Kenny and everything. And I'm in literally, I think, every one of those all the time. And uh we're we're just running in the same circles these days. So I feel like we were we were destined to meet here on the podcast today. Um, but so we appreciate having you on, and I mean, let's get right into it. So today we're going to talk. Uh, we're going to talk some Top Shot. Last time was all Zed Run. We had the team on, and I think even since then it's blown up even bigger than we uh, than it was last week. So this week we're going to talk some Top Shot, and we're going to talk some Zed Run. On the back half, we're going to race some ponies, baby. So we're going to let's get right into it. So so Ben, um, just tell us a little bit about uh, you know you've been big into Top Shot. You're now getting into Zed. Tell us a little bit about your background, how you kind of found, um, you know, the NFT space and uh, Top Shot and Zed. I mean, I, if I'm not uh, mistaken, I don't think you come from like a really heavy crypto background. So how did you kind of find everything? Well, I definitely have a diverse background and, and you know, thanks for bringing me on again. But, you know, I, I started in the restaurant industry my whole life. I was working there. And then I developed a, a company, uh, created a company called Daily Roto Sharks for DFS, which was about like Fan FanDuel and DraftKings and like tools and research and stuff. So that's kind of how I made my name in this industry, how people know about me. I went back to school for um, web development. And once I graduated from there, I got a job working at a, a military manufacturing facility, um, running a program as a manager for um, the nuclear actuator line which was um sold to all different types of uh navy um military nuclear power plants and all that kind of stuff and then i left that job worked my way back into the website development industry i guess i was um, running operations for a site called four deep and then once i found out about top shot through my daily fantasy sports channels really through bales's post everyone you know at this point knows jonathan bales is infamous top shot post so found that got into it asked a few of my other friends who are in the dfs world and you know they backed it i jumped in and kind of just used you know everything that i've learned in my background from the data analysis the web development the managerial um abilities that i learned from you know working in kind of a very rigid structural military type um facility and then moving into web development where it's 24 7 you know someone will call you with an emergency at 4 a.m so <laughs> it's, it's definitely a different mentality but the way that i found myself here was through all those channels so it made me appreciate what we have here a lot more and not to ramble too much but just to touch on your, your crypto question i you know i found out about bitcoin a long time ago i got into crypto kitties in 2017 kind of forgot yeah. about it for a while so when i came into this i did have a little bit of an understanding but not the same as you know someone who has the red laser eyes in their bitcoin profile <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna have red laser eyes by by, in a, by the end of the year i think you're i'm gonna, gonna have be- <laughs> i'm gonna have red red hooves <laughs> that, that's it red hooves i like that that's funny so um yeah, that, I mean, that's really fascinating. So um, I think, uh, wh- so when was it that you actually took the dive into Top Shop? Because we've seen, obviously, you know, there's either you were really early, you were kind of uh, January early, or you were like kind of late now, You're like February. Right. After that big weekend in February, uh, we've seen kind of a trickle down in the market pretty much daily since then. 
Oh man. Yeah. It's, it's, it's been a wild ride for sure. I mean, I, you know, when I joined, it was late January and at okay. that point every day or every week that it took for you to join was like missing out on 10 X, you know? And so, <laughs> So true. It was crazy. Oh. My friends were telling me about this and I, I just jumped in, you know, that I wasn't as hesitant as a lot of people I tried to bring in, fortunately for me. Oh my God. You no. Know? <laughs> so I got in, you know, in late January, I was able to buy up a bunch of those $3 moments that went to 40 and like all that. So I didn't sell enough of what I had, trust me. But yeah, I got in before the boom, which was nice, a little later than I would have liked. But I was able to stay profitable, learn it, make some money. And then, I mean, since that all time high of like the February 21st, 22nd, it's been, it's been a rough ride. I could say it that way. Yeah. It's interesting. I actually had the same type of experience. I was kind of late January and uh, mm -hmm. then I tried to bring in a bunch of friends too, and they were a little more hesitant mm -hmm. and some of them ended up buying the top by the time they got in. And I feel really bad about that. But uh, this is where you put the uh, not financial advice uh, chamber. And we'll, we'll take that. Coming right up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's super interesting. So let's, uh, you know, we kind of know what Top Shot is at this point. We've covered it a bunch of times on this show. Let's get into a little bit more of what's going on in the market right now. So we've seen, you know, uh, in the last couple of weeks, we've seen tons of challenges. We've seen badges come out. We've seen all this stuff, and the market. We've seen huge news on uh, you know Dapper getting investment. We've seen Michael Jordan's now potentially involved with uh, is, at least in the investment team and in Dapper and all of that. So, where do you kind of see what's your feeling on the market as a whole right now? Man, I feel like I'm in an abusive relationship with, with <laughs> Outshot. Like you know. Every other day I'm looking, I'm like, this is a great buying opportunity. And then like, I'll buy something. And then the next day I'm like, wow, today's an even better buying opportunity, right? So, like, every, every day just keeps like, oh, today's a buyer's market buyer. And so you keep thinking this and then eventually like you get like a little dead cat bounce in the market. You're like all in, you know, like I want to buy everything. So I, I kind of been going, you know, taking it day by day, week by week. And some, some days and weeks I like, I want to just like max out my credit card and get in. And then other <laughs> I'm like, should I liquidate and buy like 10 horses? Like, I don't know, you know, right. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's tough, you know? And, and like, listen, I'm not, I'm not here to give financial advice to people. I'm, I'm in the same boat as everyone else trying to learn as we go. Mm -hmm. And being a part of the NBA top shot cave where we're kind of seen as like, experts of the community and things like that. And I just want to remind people that we're all learning together, right? Like I'm asking as many questions as people are asking me. So when people ask, what are you doing? Like, I don't know, man, I'm, I'm looking every day. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to diversify a little bit, but my, my questions internally to myself over the past few days is like, should I liquidate the stuff that I just don't really care about and then hold for hold dapper to purchase back again when I find things? Do I just hold everything because I'm in series one, series two, and with, within a year or two, it's all going up? I don't know. These are the unanswerable questions. And I think I've tried to find a balance. Like I had a, around 180 moments or so, and I sold off like 70 of them and bought back into another 10 to 20 that I liked. So I sold off a bunch of like S2 commons and you know, Andre Drummond and JaVale McGee's and I bought into like a, a Jimmy Butler series one in the playoffs bubble, or I bought into like a Chris Paul rising, um, seeing stars or, or uh, some or something like that. Like just trying to get a, rid of the stuff that I don't really care about and just get into stuff that like, if I did lose money on long-term, I'd be more okay with it, but I'm just not a collector at heart. So this is a very turbulent period for me. That's interesting. Um, so not being a collector is was probably a lot harder to like I, I mean i think i think what's funny is you know if you are a collector and you were into crypto you're kind of used to like the volatility right like chamber you, you the volatility for you is who cares right like well like kind of kind of ben was saying it, it the way he was talking reminded me of like 2018 after alts like uh alt, you know all the alt markets peaked and it was just like, you know, March or April. And you're like, great buying opportunity. And then it was June and it was like, great buying opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it just kept going and some of them never came back. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's tough. Like I'm, I'm kind of like Ben where I'm not 
necessarily a collector um, where, you know, I, we just finished two, you mentioned we finished two, um, maybe three today. How many challenges ended today? Two? Uh, two at sure. least two. Two, two for, for sure. sure. Two. But, and then two last week, or then three last week. So five in the last week have ended. Right. So I'm, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know about well. you guys. I don't know about you guys, but I'm, I'm dumping all my all-stars right now, except for maybe like, you know, your, your Giannis is your, the ones that are going to do some, in my opinion, I think there's something to be, you know, one second. In my opinion, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the now financial um, advice ticker is back for those <laughs> listening at home. <laughs> um, I think, I think, you know, I think Des mentioned it too, is as we get into the playoffs, I think there's going to be more of a, we're going to see a, a we're going to see an upswing and the players that are going to do well in the playoffs. I think even their, even their, you know, challenge cards are going to do well. Your cool cats, your all-stars, I, you know, obviously I, the other ones are probably going to do better, but I still think those will, I think, do pretty well. So that's a really interesting point. So, and I'll, I'll go to Des here. So, you, Des, you are somewhat of a of a collector, right? So, um, and you're you've got a little crypto background too. So, how do you, how does it feel for you for this volatility? Uh, and especially like you know what Chad j- or Chamber just said here was uh, is something that happens in the sports card market, right? People gear up for playoffs. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. And there's there's own its own little mini cycle uh, when it comes to things like that. So, how are you feeling in the market? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, to say like you're a true hardcore collector, you don't care about the value. I think that's such a small portion uh, of those in the space. I think realistically, we're all a little bit of collector at heart, but also want to make some money. And that's where I, you know, honestly view myself at. So it, it's been interesting. I, I was very transparent with kind of my strategy right now on Twitter today, which is I'm doing two things or three things really is I'm looking for value uh, every day on people. I think that will have an opportunity to, to kind of show out and pop off in the playoffs um, coming from the physical card collecting world. It happened last year with the playoffs, you know, Jamal Murray goes for 35 points and his, his rookie card spikes, you know, two X overnight. So I think, you know, I think we will see a similar um, possible boom or short term boom during the playoffs. So I'm trying to find value uh, of the playoff teams. I posted something today that looks at like the top three players per team uh, that are projected for the playoffs. So that's what I'm looking for. What I'm doing is I'm staying pretty liquid. Uh, I sold off some of the stuff that I just didn't think had much potential to to really rise over the next few months uh, to get liquid. And then. I'm very bullish still about the off season. I think a lot of people are going to even dump further in the off season. Um, and I will be absolutely there snapping things up. So, well, that's, uh, yeah, yeah, that's definitely what happens in the card world. Right. So like when we, when we talk about this in a minute with the playoffs, um, mm-hmm. I think people need to be a little careful when this, when they're buying people for the playoffs, because what, what tends to happen is just like a challenge you can think of the playoffs as its own challenge, right? Just as teams get eliminated, those players will then dump, right? So if you're mm-hmm. not ahead of the game, one, buying, so maybe buying now for playoffs, and then two, anticipating when those players might get bumped from the playoffs, like I think that's the way you have to attack it, right? Um, and then, you know, for me, I, uh, as Ben said, I kind of went – Uh, the same direction. And I liquidated a lot of stuff and I took L's on a lot of stuff. Like I I bought all of the seeing stars and I completed the Durant challenge and uh, the dirt and I just watched it all plummet. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, why isn't the same thing going to happen for the LeBron challenge? And I was excited for the LeBron challenge and I sold it all out and I didn't even complete it. So Mm -hmm. I literally didn't even complete it and I sold it all out last week or when I saw what was going to happen. And uh, I I made the right choice from, you know, like what is going to happen with those moments. I don't have, you know, the LeBron mint lottery ticket anymore, but mm-hmm. I, you know, and then you see what happens when that reward challenge comes out and uh, people dump that. The Kevin Durant was down under for like 400 yeah. bucks at some point. Wait until LeBron's like, narrating that next one and it's going to explode. <laughs> That's totally true. <laughs> so so true. Hey Joe, um, can I just comment on the volatility a little yeah, bit? Yeah, absolutely. So so 
I'm not a specifically from a crypto background, right? Like I, I've had crypto since 2017, just not like a ton, you know, so I've been buying and selling it, but um, I've been involved in penny stocks for a couple of years. So penny stocks is very volatile. Super I'm very, volatile. Yeah. very, very used to up 30%, down 60%. Like I get it. But um, with, in this case, what really, you know, boggles my mind a little bit is that when it goes down, when these, you know, the prices go up 120% and go down 60, but when it goes down, what historical um, analysis can we provide to say that it has the possibility to go back up, right? Like, you know, when, when we're talking about challenges and stuff like that, yeah, you know, the challenge pieces are going to go up, they're going to go down. And, you know, that's with the whole buy the rumor, sell the news, you know, that's a stock thing, buy it on the way up, sell it before the news actually comes out and everyone gets disappointed about what it actually was. Um, but so in this case, I'm used to the volatility. But when I see something drop 20%, 20%, 20%, and then it just keep going down, like, is there a floor? Yeah, you know, for that, that moment that I bought for $40, because you know, in late February, the floors of everything were so high, can it ever get back to that $40 for, you know, an S1 common or S2 common or whatever it is for these like kind of no name ish players, right? Like, I don't think they'll ever get back to that. I think they're going to just keep going down and down until the market kind of finds itself and balances. And then we have, you know, we have support levels and things like that, that we could actually look at. But here it's like, you know, even the market cap of flow itself has seemed to have no floor. So mm -hmm. when it comes to the volatility, I'm fine with up and down, but lately it's just been down, 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 you know? Yeah. So that's what I'm concerned about the most. Yeah. And it's, uh, I think that's a really great point because it, what, what I was concerned about too, when we were, um, you know, talking about some of uh, Des's data charts in the last couple of weeks is Des would put out, you know, the percent listed, right? And what happens when now this is going down, 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 you're starting to see those percents listed rise, right? So as more of them come on the market and they're, you know, still setting new floors and all of that, you end up with, these huge, huge cell walls or like that right. you, to your point, it may never get back to a, a $3 moment, may never get back to a $40 moment because the more that that happens, people are less likely to hold, right? And they're more likely to put their moment on the market and buy. the buying power needed to like pump that back up is right. astronomical, right? Yeah. So um, I think that's a really good point. Um, but, but the supply too, you know, like that's, that's a big point that people always forget about the pricing. It's like the reason the pricing was so crazy at that time is a, we had all the media reports coming out at the exact same time. B Josh Hart, Tyrese Halliburton, they all started talking about top shop for the first time. All the 15,000 CCs went to Ellie overnight when they told us that some might happen and People were speculating and then boom, they flip the switch and then they're, they're all 15K and there's no other supply coming at that time. There, there's nothing else to do but buy what's already in there. So everybody mm -hmm. who just made a you know 3000% or whatever, who, you know, they have this liquid liquidation lying around, they're like, oh yeah, this is this is the floor. This, you know, this JaVale McGee, $26, there's nothing cheaper. I'll buy that right now. And right. then as soon as they start releasing more supply, that $26 moment goes down to seven and you're like, whoa, what happened? So every time they keep releasing more and more supply, these, these um, you know, kind of look backs into the past that we see, it, you can't compare these apples to apples. And now that they're talking about, there's so many S1s they haven't even released yet that they have to flood the market with. Like, how do you even have any kind of perception of what the real value will be? Because the low ask isn't a real value of your serial. But if you do a serialization estimation like Moment Ranks has, it's very illiquid. So you can't actually get rid of it if you wanted to. So what is a true value now? And I don't think anyone has an answer for that yet. And so the market has to kind of figure it out. It goes back to the implementation. I know when we had Jack Selman on, he talked about this, but a true bid system, right? Understanding what someone will pay right now for that moment. That's where you start to understand true value and, and liquidity of, of what you have. Um, this kind of list and eBay approach is, is not conducive to understanding true value. So, yeah. you know, I think that's, that's the next step if they want to take it. I'm not saying they're going to or they should, but 
that would kind of start to solve that problem. But totally agree. So what, uh, Ben, what do you, you know, as somebody who I would assume still believes in Top Shot long term and what their, uh, you know, what their goals are, what they're doing, um, what do you kind of think, uh, you know, people should be or at least what you're going to be doing in this let's call it a medium to medium term, right? In the next six months, even, um, you know, how are you going to approach? Uh, because I think you made a really good point is, uh, first of all, I think patience is something that's got to be huge, right? Like, and, but, um, so what's your approach in the next, you know, the short term and what do you want to see from Top Shot in the short term? Well, I guess the best way to kind of um, preempt what, what my answer is that I fully believe in Top Shot and Dapper Labs and them as a con uh, company and as a long-term prospect of flow and what they're doing with the blockchain. So I fully believe in Top Shot and the company behind it and the backing and the investments and all that. I don't necessarily believe in my portfolio though. So my <laughs> portfolio, you know, like I was buying as if things not were always going to go up, but like we had a reasonable expectation that they weren't going to just crater the market, right? So I was buying things like a Kem Birch or, you know, a, um, a, what, what's his name? A Kai Bowman or, you know, some people like this who like aren't really big names, but at the same time, like they weren't the low ass, they weren't the lowest in series one or this and that. And so I was buying these kind of people I don't really care about because everything was going up 500%. So I could buy this and sell it. And then when those things drop, now I'm, I have to take a more realistic approach towards my portfolio, right? Like what am I willing to keep long-term and what am I willing to take losses on? Because I just don't care about it, right? Like I'm willing to take the losses right now on things I don't care about to get into either hold dapper to buy more things or just to consolidate and get into things I care about, right. Or care more about, but down the line, I'm more willing to take losses on those moments if they happen to depreciate in value because I actually like them. So that's like, you know, a little seed of a collector's feeling growing out of my body, right? Like it's bringing me more into that mindset. So like I'm able to see down the line, right. Cause I trust in dapper and top shot. So I still can have long-term plans. But what my plans were coming in has had to change up to this point. So now that I was up, you know, almost 500% in the end of February, now I'm closer to like 100 ish. Like I lost a lot of value, but I'm still feeling good about having joined when I did. If I joined a week, two weeks later, I might have a different perception on the environment, right? Like, so I joined and I was able to see myself make money and feel that and, and yes. talk with people about how well I'm doing and how fun this is. So then going through this lull and hearing from the OGs, like like my boy, uh, like library or bowler basket tells me all the time, like how different things were in December, January when they went through lulls, right? They, like this has happened like up and then low or down and then spike and then low. The problem is the difference now is the supply. So mm -hmm. what I'm trying to deal with is if I buy like a LeBron or, or someone now, and not even LeBron because he's like the GOAT, but if I buy like a Trey Young or something who's like an up and coming star, could be one of the best three point shooters the league's ever seen, like someone like that, that I want to buy, like how many more moments are coming out from him? Are there going to be cooler moments? Is he going to dunk in a game one time? And I'm just like, I want that one, you know, like. So, like the Anthony Edwards, right? Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, right? Like, so so I can buy into a player that I like, but it may not be my favorite moment that I'm going to see out of him. Like, do I prefer the, you know, the S2 LaMelo ball assist? Or like if he throws down a crazy dunk one day in S3 or S4, maybe I just like it better. So when we're looking at market caps of moments and comparisons, it, it's it's easy to do that now, right? In February, it was easy to do that then with the environment, but how do we do that a month from now? So that's where I'm going with it. So my plan, and this is not financial advice once again, my <laughs> plan is to just figure out what I don't care about, what I do, and not get rid of, a, that's a bad term, but liquidate and consolidate because I do believe in the platform long term, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to max out all my credit cards on, on this, you know, every time there's a buying opportunity, there's plenty of things to diversify into, right? We have conversations coming on that soon. So I'm in a good position now where, you know, I was able to get my, um, my initial investment back. So playing with kind of house money, feeling good about it. So if I lost, you know, I'm more okay with it as opposed to someone who joined 
you know, a week or two ago and every moment they have is now 50%. Like, how do you approach that? Right? Like you can't say, let me sell this and buy up into something I like because you, you spent that little amount of money you came in with and you've already lost. So why are you going to put 500, a thousand more in to buy something you truly like if you had that kind of bad taste in your mouth? So I'm just coming from a different perspective, the same way someone who came a month earlier than me has a different perspective sitting, you know, a million dollars in your account is a different way of looking at it. So it's, it's, it's tough. You know, this is a case by case portfolio by portfolio basis really. And it's hard to kind of give that generalized advice because I was telling people to buy challenges early on, right? Like buy whatever you see, whatever challenge opens up, go and buy it right away. It's not the same now, right? The, the evaluation, the expectation of your expected value in the future has changed. So I can't give that kind of advice, nor would I want to, but at the end of the day, people are looking for it. So how do you, how do you um, navigate that environment of shit? I'm nervous as well. Oh, sorry, I'm nervous as well, right? They're nervous. They're asking me what they should do. I'm trying to figure out what I should do. Let's figure it out together, but not bail on the platform of the vision because none of that changed, right? Like they got more money. They got more people involved. They got more media. They haven't even started marketing yet. So long term, fully bullish on the platform. Short term, scared out of my mind. Medium <laughs> term, there's plenty of um, variations of my strategy to adapt to as things change, right? So like, it's 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 not a specific answer, but like that's kind of the way I'm looking at it. Short term, figure it out. Medium term, what am I okay with consolidating into? And then long term, you know, a year, two, five years from now, when I go to look at my account, do I want to see 120 moments of this bomb layup assist or something, or do I want to have five to 10 moments of these great things I want to collect for my life. And so that's the kind of um, thought process I'm going through right now. And I feel like a lot of other people are doing similar things. I think it's a great point. I think, uh, first of all, it's hard to manage 120 moments. Uh, it's hard to keep an eye on all of that because like I'm looking at my portfolio and I sold more than half of my stuff in the last week mm -hmm. and I had, you know, 60 or so and I'm down to like 29 and mm -hmm. uh, it it's for the same reason I'm looking through it. I'm like, I don't even didn't even know I had this stuff. Some of it. Right. And I'm like, for the same reasons. Right. So I think that's good advice. Um, and I think you know, the flight to quality is something that you definitely have to consider uh, if you're going to be holding long term. So one quick more, one more thing before we kind of switch gears here. I do want to get to Dez's charts, which are a little more short term. So here's some sure. potential plays that could be made in the short term to kind of, uh, uh, you know, maybe just play a little strategy. So Dez, what are we going to be looking at here real quick? Yeah, so uh, we talked about it a little bit with the the potential playoff boom, and, and you know I say potential um, for sure, just because it's based off the card market. We don't know if it's going to quite translate. We all know that a lot of people in Top Shot are from the crypto world and not necessarily NBA fans and collectors, so you have to take that with some grain of salt. But uh, what we're looking at here is the Eastern Conference. I think the top eight teams that are uh, scheduled to make the playoffs right now, obviously that can change. Uh, but the top three players from each of those teams. And, you know, I've always posted this type of chart, which is basically kind of from the DFS world is where I really got it from, which is this quick scan value analysis. Where's the green? Where's the red to avoid? Um, so, you know, what we're looking at here is, is those players, the first moments. I'll be very clear that I'm kind of bullish more on the first moments because I think those have scarcity, those have desire. We'll see as it builds, you know, whether – the moment really defines its value or the, or the scarcity. So you're, you're talking about the first moment, the ones with the first moment badge, is that correct? Called the top shot debut is what correct. they now label gotcha. it as. Um, so the first moment to be minted for that player on top shot. Um, so yeah, that's what we're looking at. Um, you know, I think there's some really great values here. I put a couple down at the bottom. I think Gordon Hayward just sitting so low at, I think it's like $30. Um, being a first moment, being on a playoff team in Charlotte right now, uh, I think is interesting. Like I said, it's a high value play. It's not, it's not uh, going to hold its weight long term, I don't think. Uh, but then you have, you know, things like Jalen Brown, who live in um, Tatum's shadow. Why is there such a discrepancy? They have similar stats, things like that to exploit. I think Trey is going to be a great star. I think he gets undervalued all the time. 
uh, Embiid coming back off injury, you know, Philadelphia being really number one right now. And then Tyler Hero, uh, so many feels like everyone's moving to Miami these days. Um, but I still think he has a shot to stand out and, uh, and make an impact on the playoffs like he did last year. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, when we're talking about, um, where to find value, uh, take this chart and, and we'll post them on, on Twitter and we'll, um, you know, make sure that they're available for everybody to, to check out. But I would say find the value on the best teams left. Right. So like, and, and, or maybe that's how you play the whole thing. Right. So, uh, you know, you, you kind of have them listed here by standings. Right. So I might be looking for just a, just a quick, there is a, I saw in the Western conference, there is a little debate. Memphis probably should be in there. This is a little bit old standing. So I'll just throw that out as a caveat. Yeah, that's okay. And then, but so, you know, you might want to look for, undervalued players or moments on good teams, right? Yes. Like, and, and like the best teams, right? So, um, because like I said, what you see in the card market is uh, buy up, buy up, buy up, buy up, and then they get bounced from the playoffs and it tanks, right? So you want to look for something that has longevity. You also potentially could be looking for young players, right? Like you have, um, you, you know, there's, like younger, like last year we saw Tyler Hero, right? He was the star of the bubble and made a run to the finals and his stuff went crazy in the physical car market. So things like that. And again, these are short-term potential buy and sell plays, not uh, long-term hold type of stuff because they likely will crater if they bounce. Um, Mm -hmm. So just be aware of that. But I think it's time to switch gears. You see my background here, which is horses. Uh, Ben, you and I have been, have been chatting about the horses for about a week as well. Um, You know, you, I know you were kind of on the fence about getting in and then uh, what, what turned it for you? Uh, Cause I I know we do have a DM going where you were like, I'm not sure if I'm going to get involved. And now you're, now you're fully in. So let's talk a little about your opinion on Zed and then we'll, we'll bring in a, do we have a fifth guest here that we're going to? Yes. I'm going to, I'm going to send him the invite right now. He is. Okay, perfect. So while we're doing that, while we're doing that, uh, talk about, you know, what flipped your, what changed your mind on Zed? So, I mean, it was similar to Top Shot, right? Where I found out about it and I started asking people around, what do you think? Is there a possibility to make some money? Is it fun? And I was getting answers that weren't really satisfying me that I was like, okay, I, I understand, you know, maybe I'll check it out down the line. And, you know, I, I looked at the site, I read the documentation. I was, I was, interested right it piqued my interest and but we started holding these um clubhouses around zed just to talk about it and see what people thought and some of the founders ended up coming on and asking them questions and hearing what they had to say uh chris and and rob and these guys were just great and the vision that they had and the utility and the um the ability for them to listen to the audience or and their supporters and actually say that's a great idea. We'll, we'll put that up and we'll probably act on it or we will act. And just like, it, it, it's just, it's such a, a vision more so than a game that really, that really got me and brought me on. So it, it wasn't, it wasn't a huge thing for me that I wanted to dump in. Right. But I'll tell you the exact reason why I felt comfortable doing it. Um, so you guys probably know uh, lucky Jack in the, in the Z run industry. And so, um, Props to Jack. He actually, he loaned me two horses. He let me use them and, and race them and, and see what it was like and have fun with it. And I enjoyed it. It was fun. I came second in a couple. I, I won, you know, some, a little money here and there. And I was like, I'm hooked. Right. Like, so for me, it was like the actual doing it and not just hearing about it, but the vision that they have, the long-term strategies, the metaverse, the augmented reality, the NFT blockchain, bringing people in, you know, being able to be a a jockey on a horse or make an NFT of a billboard that hangs up in a racetrack somewhere, like all the different applications just provides a lot more utility for me than something like Top Shot probably ever could. But that doesn't mean I'm going to do one or the other, right? So I I started looking into it and then I was asking around in the Zed um, channels, doing the clubhouses, just talking as much as I can to find out about it. 
And then when that drop came and I just, I just dove into it, loaded up my, my Ethan MetaMask and I got a couple horses, which I'm excited about. And for me, it's no looking back. Like, you know, I just really love it. I love the data involved. There's so much more to do and research and look into and predict and hearing that, okay, this is going to be as close to real life horses as possible, right? When, you know, distance and gate and weather and surface and country, all this stuff is eventually going to impact these races. And every time something new, oh, there it is. <laughs> something new that's introduced to the ecosystem, it's going to change everything. And so like that, that like almost Rubik's cube mentality of a company like hooked me. And Jack, I don't know if you heard, but I was just fucking singing your praises, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I, I missed that. Oh, that's too bad. Thank so you. it's funny. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Ben, did you even know we were having Jack on? No, no. I, <laughs> that's I, really I, funny. I have no idea. So, that's great. so we. So while we make this introduction, so we have Lucky Jack with us, who is uh, one of the one of the bigger stables in the game, and uh, we. One of the reasons we're having him on is is uh, because you know. I, I couldn't agree with you more, Ben, that one of the coolest things about uh, the entire thing is the community, right? And um, so you, you had just mentioned that Lucky Jack loaned you, loaned you a horse or two to, to get started and race on. He heard our show last week with the team and actually gifted us all a horse. So mm -hmm. we we have now the Mint Condition, who, or sorry, Mint Condition, who we're going to run. He also gave uh, you know Chad and Des one. And we're actually going to race all, all five of us are going to race in a Griffin race uh, coming up right now. So we have, uh, so Lucky Jack, thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate it. Um, tell us, you know, kind of your me. real quick before we, yeah, before we do this race, uh, tell us your quick Zed run story. How did you get involved? And how did you get baby. I was, I was in really? a film. Yeah. And um, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a crazy ride. I've seen a lot of different <laughs> waves come and go. I mean, I'm very excited by a lot of the new people that came in. I think we're reaching new communities. Um, I, I think it's great. And I love the game more and more every day as they keep unleashing these features, right? Um, I was getting a little annoyed today that the races were taking 12 hours oh. to, to go <laughs> off, but I think Bro. they're working on that. So. <laughs> That's a good problem to have when you got too many races to run. So right. give them credit Might there. be nice. <laughs> My whole yeah, thing so, with my stable is right off the jump, I was really interested in the rarity. And so I realized that, look, there's only a thousand Z1s. I can't have all a thousand. As bad as I want all 1,000, I can't have them. I said, okay, fine. So what can I get? I, I cornered Peach Puff, which is one of the rarest super rare colors in the fiery breed type. And I got it Z1 through Z5, you know, unraced, unbred, mm -hmm. like – Wow. mint condition you know what i'm talking about so <laughs> wow. I, i'm kind of i'm both always in the background like watching the wave kind of build but i'm also trying to be um engaging with new people because it's really exciting and that's a good way to be kind so so i uh, yeah we really appreciate it and i think honestly that's um such a huge piece because you know it is not um Currently, I wouldn't say it is inexpensive to get involved with, right? So, sure. you know, there's definitely a, a cost to entry, and so cool. you know, for you to for you to do that, it's uh, it's really cool. So, um, Chad, I, I mean, let's get you know, you got to get some tips from Lucky Jack. Like, you you've got what three or four horses in your stable now, or five? I have, I have five horses. I gave away one too uh, because Lucky Jack was so generous. <laughs> it's um, contagious. It is contagious. Um, I had, uh, the, I think, the, the day of the drop, um, Wilson Chandler, uh, who's a basketball player that I'm familiar with, might not be a household name, but definitely a solid basketball player, um, was I, was already in um, was already in Zen Run, and was on his way home apparently, and missed the. I, I don't know if he got pulled over or something. Pulled over, yeah. Uh, but missed missed the drop. So I said, well, send them. You know, send me your um you know send me your eth address and I'll, I'll send one over um yeah but i had <laughs> i feel bad des and joe and i were all in the same kind of group talking and uh trying to you know participating on the drop and i i, I think i pulled five or six you killed uh, it you hit I was, five yeah, he yeah he hit i was doing all right i only got two i think des you only got one 
Oh, yeah, uh, one. but it was a great one. So <laughs> that's all that matters. That's all you want. So yeah. uh, out, out of the one, so because I, I was so, uh, I, I received such a bounty, uh, I felt uh, it, it was only, it was only good of me <laughs> to help out somebody in need, you know? So lucky Jack, uh, give us, before we run this race here, um, just give some of the newer stables out there, maybe guys that have two, three, five, maybe zero horses. Uh, how, you know, how can they get started and be successful in the game, in your opinion? The first thing they should do is watch Doofy's videos and Poseidon's videos because they already lay out all the basics really, really well for new people. Um, you're, you're, I mean, there's an aspect to this game that's for fun. It's random. It's chance. I recommend having that as a separate stable from whatever you plan on doing with your investment horses. Because if you just have your investment horses, um, you're going to ruin them by, by racing. You can't resist the Griffey Madness. It just it tears them <laughs> in apart. <so. laughs> you need to have some pool of horses for that purpose. And then you can be clear-headed and you can make strategic decisions. Uh, do you want to breed? Do you want to race? Do you want to be more on the rarity side of things? One thing that nobody really has done yet, which is going to be interesting to see who the first person is, is super coats. Um, I think a stable could go out there right now, even with common colors. It's easier to make them with common colors, actually, uh, and, and start popping out super coats, maybe for a premium, maybe get some cool names, make it a theme. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, and I think uh, that's something that's really attractive about this as well, is that there are so many different ways to – like skin Z, right? Like it's, it, you can be a breeder, you could be a racer, you could be a collector, you could be uh, all of that, right? And um, there's room for all of that. But I do think, um, you know, to your point, the biggest thing that you can do is get educated, right? There is yeah, a, for sure. There is a large uh, learning curve. <laughs> Des, what, what are you looking at back there? What did we just throw on your screen? <laughs> I just had a quick, since you guys had all your good horse backgrounds, I, I, uh, as they say, I broke my maiden today and got my first, uh, which sounds like a sexual term, but um, I, actually broke, I actually got my first win. Yeah. <laughs> all right, nice. So that's good. All right. So we'll do one more thing here before we run. And uh, Des, you did put together some data for us for uh, post drop open yeah. sea sales. So we're going to be yeah. looking at uh, and going through really quickly kind of what has happened on the secondary market since mega drop, right? So, yeah. um, you know, I think there was a frenzy. So we see, you know, we had 2000 horses drop on Friday, which I thought, you know, to be honest, there's obviously, uh, you know, room for improvement, but I thought overall the drop went pretty smooth. Um, you know, there. I think the, the gas fees need to be fixed, which it sounds like they'll be fixed by next drop um, because people running or people going away, spending gas and no horses is trouble. Right. But um, other, it was definitely smoother than the, the one previous. Right. So um, but we saw a lot of action on the secondary market after that. So walk us through kind of your big takeaways from uh, what we saw. Yeah, this is super indicative of a very healthy market. First off, you know, there were 263 gen uh, Genesis sales, uh, and that's not necessarily just coming from those 2,000 horses dropped on Friday. It could have been horses dropped previously, um, but still 263 sales uh, of Genesis horses this weekend on the, the secondary market. Honestly, I think, you know, everyone's so kind of concerned, oh, are people just getting in it to flip the horses? This would signal actually it's not. People are really holding their horses, racing them, which I think is is a great you know great sign for the overall appetite for getting into Z Run. Um, you know what I will say: the biggest takeaway is holy crap! You know Z ones just became incredibly valuable. I mean they were already selling for a ton, but the average sale being over twenty seven thousand or twenty six thousand dollars per Z one is insane. And we're not even talking about you know legendary Z ones. Um, you know, winners of class one races, we're talking unraced, just potential is $27,000, which man, it's huge. You look towards the that bottom. That was the average sale? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's monstrous. It's monstrous. We didn't let any go for under 30 after a certain point. 
So a couple yeah. of 20, a couple of 25, and then we were like, all right, we, we feel the demand coming. Why would you go less? Totally. Right. Right. I, and I was going to ask you, does this take into account Discord deals? No, no. Just, this no. is just, just open seat. Right. So this isn't even the whole, like, right. right. So you probably, did the Discord deals, honestly, there's probably double or triple this number, I would think, yeah. right? I would um, think so, yeah. Just because- A lot know, is being done in Discord. Yeah, and Matic has its issues at the moment, right? So, um, but that that's pretty wild. So, what was your last point there, Des? Before I, I cut just you like off? So I, you know, I posted in Twitter. This is looking very circa January of Top Shot with these ROI values, and the Z tens are, are, you know, the best example of that. Holy cow! They were selling for a hundred dollars even on Friday, which is shout out to the Z Run team for not boosting it up to like three hundred, which they could have easily. Um, you know, but they were selling for a hundred and the resale market on an unraced Z10 is like 700 bucks. So right. it's a huge ROI there. Can't be ignored. Um, yeah. It's like, you you know, know, like pack drops. Pretty much. Yeah, yes, absolutely. And for, you know, from my, I've, I've been in about three weeks now. And so I've, and I've spent pretty much all my waking hours, uh, and I've had horse dreams now. So some of my non-waking hours, uh, <laughs> talk, and thinking about this and, uh, you know, what I, I like the point that you just made about um, they could have jacked the price on the drop and they and they right. didn't. I think they really want um, people to be able to get involved and P and be able to own Genesis horses. Right. Because, um, you know, what we'll see down the road after having these conversations over the past couple of weeks with the team and everything is this is kind of just the beginning. Right. And owning the Genesis horses is going to be kind of the the key factor to like value long-term, I believe, you know, and then from that, everything else will, will stem. Right. Uh, would you kind of agree with that? Lucky Jack? Yeah. I'm, I'm sitting here agreeing thinking, you know, there's not many drops left, bro. Right. There, there's <laughs> really like, everyone's waiting on the next job. I, I wonder like after that, like what's the plan? Because, well, you know, it's, it's, and it's funny. I did hear on the clubhouse that uh, one of the guys said, you know, it's in our benefit to get the Genesis horses out quick, like out, right? And yeah, because then the game can kind of start being the game, right? As far as Dynamic. you know, what the what the ecosystem can turn into, what the breeding can turn into, and all of that. So, uh, and then they don't have to worry about drop mechanics either. So, yeah. <laughs> right? Right. like, uh, so, uh, but yeah, I think that's a great point. Is you know, this was two thousand horses. There's probably about a little maybe maybe 60 percent of the genesis horses left to drop um and to your point jack before it's going to be mostly you know the less rare stuff at this point just because of how that distribution curve looks right so um you know get your hands on what you can because it'll be priced pretty reasonably as opposed to the you don't have to spend thirty thousand dollars on a horse even though people are and they're gonna keep yeah. doing it i think and it's only gonna go higher so Sh uh, Chamber, shall shall we race? I think we should. Uh, let let me Let's see if I can get this thing going here. Five brand new first time starters. I love yeah. it. Yeah, I, I want one from each of us, and then uh, some other of the players in the Discord jumped in. I think Lucky yeah. Jack uh, built Pretty the FOMO. Mad. Yeah, he built Pretty the FOMO mad. here. So, <laughs> oh, Zook. That's a name. This one's hey. mine. Mint condition, baby. That's me. Woo. There you go. Let's go. You know that I had named it that before. I knew that you know. Nice. That's so funny. That's I couldn't believe you had that name. <laughs> Toss the salt, gain six. Fun, Fun fact. fact. That's Thank you, Lucky Jack, for that one. That's mine there. This one had nasty odds. This one had like six point something odds. Which one's yours, Ben? That's me right there. Lee, all right. I like it. It's a sprint, 100 meters. Is this a 1,000 like meters? Yeah, mm -hmm. quick, intense. All right, here Holy we go. Nick, We've got I'm nervous. Three Hold seconds. On, I have to tell you something <laughs> after this. Very important. All right, and they're off. Here we go. I can't here really read the screen, but it is going. One so sec, I'll see if I can give you a call. I'll give you a commentary here. We got Royal Decree in second. Fun fact in first. Uh, fun fact still in first. Mint conditions in there. Where's me? Oh, oh come on. go wire to wire. <laughs> wire, to wire. I never see Let's horses go, go wire to wire, but I'll take it. 
Let's go, Flea. Come on. The Fun fact, the still in the lead. Flea's oh making God. his way up the. Uh, Look oh. how tight it is. How much? How we got? We're halfway home already. Here we go. Yeah. Fun fact. Fun fact in the lead. Hold, baby. Hold. Oh my God. We got we Royal to the Get me on the screen. Get me on the screen, guys. Uh oh, who's coming up from behind? Hey, Lee! Oh, no. Lee! Let's go! <laughs> oh, Lee! Take go! Oh. Wow! Wow! Ben! Ben, you guys. Ben, you my first win ever. Ben, you scored. Oh, 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 my God! God. Uh, Let's Ryan go. Yeah, Fun hey, fact we can go on. Flee the winner. What, what was the time differential there, Chamber? Uh, we got 56 201 versus 56 258. Wow. All right, I'm throwing him. Nice. Who wants the highest bid? Wow. <laughs> One and oh, baby. Let's go. So, Ben, ben are you going to go on to race it or are you going to keep it? It won a hundred percent. Bro, I'm gonna race the shit out of yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> that. That rush that I just got, not being on the screen and then dusting everybody, like let's <laughs> let's be real. That was amazing. So yeah. isn't that funny? Like that's the that's the fun of this, right? It's it's I mean, at the heart of it, it's exciting to race, right? Uh Chamber, I think you need to work on uh we need to work on our race calling a little bit. I think we could make a new living for ourselves here. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh man that oh that's great. right we do i gotta plug the plug the pony plug um, oh yeah it friday yeah 7 30 i believe and we're gonna have uh wilson on as well oh you are nice very yes. cool yeah. yes check that check the pony plug out that's um you know the some of the community guys uh i think it was zook and uh yeah, stanley, stanley studios, studios put that hey, together what, what day you're gonna be there friday jack Friday, I think we're doing that at 7 30. I'll be on there too, actually. Me and Kenny. Me and oh, you Kenny guys are gonna be on there too. Jeez, nice. it's a grand old party. We'll be watching in the in the background then. And uh I'll try to put some horses in a race. Yeah, get your horses yes, in the uh, races. Hey Jack, do you want to send us a link for that? And I can put it in the description if anybody wants to join that. Yeah. Yeah. You guys awesome. see my background? Yeah, there oh Whoa. there it is. <laughs> Why Wait, so how, much, how much did you take down? What was the prize pool that you just took down there? Uh, I won. It was a $40 prize pool. I won, what, 24 bucks? There you go. Look at that. I'm in, baby. Let's go. Let's go. That, that's what, like, one, one sixth of his total price that I paid for him. So let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Awesome. Well, I, I think that's the, that's a great place to stop. So Lucky Jack, thank you for, uh, Thanks for one, having me, guys. Yeah, thank you for your generosity. It's been it's been awesome uh, getting to know you in the community. And then uh, Ben, thank you very much for coming on, sharing your thoughts on Top Shot. Uh, it's been a it's been a long time coming that we got together. So appreciate you coming on. And I think Des is going to be on on your show coming up in a little bit. Yeah, in about an hour actually. So we're we're doing a little swip, a little uh, swap here, swap meet. Um, so I, I came on here to do a little NBA Z. He's gonna come on the NBA Top Shot Cave to do a little NBA Z, and and uh, we have some stuff to break actually. Um, that we're gonna do on the cave with with Let's me and Z, uh, with me and Dad <laughs> that we were going through some data the other day. So if you guys are not joining in that you know you're going to get the fomo because we may never repeat it again <laughs> so, it's the beauty sure of, cl of clubhouse right <laughs> on, the, on the clubhouse and i did want to just finish off by saying guys thank you so much for having me on this was incredible amazing i'm i'm more than willing to talk about zed all the time now and and to lucky jack you weren't on when i was singing your praises so let me do it again man um they were asking me you know how i got into this and i was telling them that i heard about it and people like kind of funneled me into you and you helped me out loaning me my first two horses to kind of get a feel for it. So thank you, man. I appreciate it. And I dedicated that first place win to you right there. Brother. Oh, so, man. Oh, that feels good. Oh, right in the feels, right? In the making feels. memories today, guys. We're making uh, memories. It. Look Thanks, at that. Man. But that is going to do us, uh, do it for us today for Chamber and Des. I am Joe. And until next time, stay mint. Stay mint.